Hey, Animals at Work watchers, welcome to another great episode. All over the planet, there are millions of animals that have jobs. Ah! This is the show that brings you the funniest, coolest, and most bizarre... Animals at Work. Coming up. Sam the Superdog has the incredible job of being Lauren's ears. Henry the Fire Safety Goat faces his first night shift. And Tyrone is the world's only black macaque food critic. If he doesn't like it, then uh, we won't be feeding it to the rest of the zoo. But now it's showtime. Hey everybody, I'm John Barrowman and welcome to Animals at Work. This is my best friend Jack, otherwise known as Captain Jack. And I got him from a rescue home about two years ago and ever since he's been a faithful, faithful friend. Just like our first story of this hearing dog, Sam. First we're off to Nottinghamshire in the UK. Meet Sam and Lauren. Together they make up an incredible team. Lauren, along with 35,000 other children in Britain, is deaf. And Sam is her official hearing dog. He acts as Lauren's ears and keeps her safe from harm where there's cause for alarm. Yes, Sam is a superhero. Unfortunately, he doesn't fly. He does something far more important. He might miss it, but... Good. You look after me. And it's a duty Sam's committed to 24 hours a day. Things were pretty tough for Lauren before Sam came to work for her. She feels quite proud to have him because before she was quite nervous. She felt very isolated from the community. But that was before Good Super boy. Sam came on the scene. Good boy, Sam. In the six months he's been working for Lauren, things have changed dramatically. Having Sam has stopped her from being as nervous as what she was. Because he's there at the side of her. He's giving her a lot of confidence. There's Sam. He's a best friend. Yes, Sam and Lauren are quite the team. And now Lauren wants to prove to everyone just how amazing Sam is. <laughs> She signed him up for a dog agility course. And it's the perfect chance for Sam to show just how strong their bond is. Sam's never let Lauren down, but the agility course is a notorious test of a dog's physical skills. It features tricky obstacles, including tunnels, jumps, the dreaded A-frame. Believe me, it's no walk in the park. To succeed, Sam will have to listen carefully to Lauren's commands, Ava. making it the ultimate test of their communication. Luckily, when it comes to communication, Sam and the other Golden Labradors have a head start. They're known for their keen intelligence and their great temperament, making it clear why they make such great assistance dogs. It's a job that comes naturally to Sam, especially the most important bit, Alerting Lauren when the fire alarm sounds. What is it? Sam going down on all fours is his signal to Lauren that it's time to leave. And that's not the only way Sam's helping Lauren's family. He's even got them to communicate better. Prior to Lauren uh, having Sam or us having Sam, we'd have to physically go up and get Lauren or shout very loudly. But not anymore. Good boy. Take it now time. Sam carries notes to Lauren from her mum and dad. That will coco Sam for a walk. To even get to that point, Sam has undergone roughly 18 months of training. Training has made him very special. He's only one of 12 hearing dogs paired with a child in the country. And he's clearly done very well. And they've got a wonderful bond. <laughs> yes, it's quite obvious when you see them together. 
That bond is about to be really tested amongst the obstacles on the agility course. Sam's determined not to let Lauren down, so the pressure's on. Has he got what it takes? Later, will Sam be able to show off his skills? Good boy. Or will he let Lauren down? It's not just today that animals have had jobs. In fact, history reveals that in the past, they've had even more amazing jobs than today. And here are those History's Heroes! Hello and welcome to History's Heroes. I am John Bomberman. Thank you, thank you, world famous historian, VIP, and superstar. <laughs> oh, my eyes, stop it. <sighs> As I was saying, I'm quite the celebrity in the animal historian world. People have been gripped by my amazing stories of the fantastic and the famous, just like these celebrity creatures. Our first famous working animal is Clara, an Indian rhinoceros who found fame when she became one of the first living rhinos to be seen in Europe. She arrived in Rotterdam in 1741 and was an animal instant hit. People have never seen an animal like her. When word of her arrival spread, everyone wanted to see Clara. So she set off on a tour of Europe for the next 17 years. Yes, 17 years. During her road trip, Clara visited Italy, Prague, Switzerland, Denmark, Poland, Holland, and the UK. Meeting royals galore and posing for artists. She was so famous, she even had navy ships named after her. That is one famous rhino. Her next famous hero worked way back in 1945 in Colorado, USA. At first, no one had ever heard of a chicken called Mike. <laughs> Apart from Lloyd Olson, the farmer who planned on eating him. Lloyd chopped off Mike's head, but Mike's body had other ideas. It simply got up and walked off. Miraculously, his brain stem was left on his body, meaning that Mike could walk around without a head. Yup, he survived like this for a record-breaking 18 months. As his fame grew, he even went on tour earning up to 4,500 US dollars a month, making it a no-brainer for Mike to be awarded a history hero accolade. Remember, it may have worked for Mike, but for any budding celebs out there, a word of advice. Try not to lose your head. <laughs> Get it? <laughs> now, on to our final tale of animal celebrity. In 1948, in the Hong Kong docks, a stray cat called Simon started work on a Navy boat, HMS Amethyst. As the ship's cat, his job took him out to sea and into war. One day, the enemy blasted through the ship, causing serious injury to Simon. Simon was rushed to the medical bay, where he was treated alongside the injured sailors. Miraculously, Simon survived, winning the respect of the crew and showing such heroics that the captain rode back to London to report the cat's bravery. Word spread, and with the help of newspaper reports, Simon's story was told across the country. He became one of the most famous faces of the day and had won his way into the heart of the British public. People started sending Simon letters, and he soon received so much fan mail that the captain had to appoint a special press officer to deal with all the post. That is one famous cat, meow. So congratulations to Simon. You are top of the history heroes pups. Ah, I love a good award ceremony. Tears, laughter, and lots and lots of photographers. <laughs> so I'd just like to thank you all for watching this week's History's Heroes. In particular, you, the paparazzi. <laughs> Ha-ha! Spiked ya! Woo-hoo-hoo! Hey, 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 I did it! <laughs> and now we're off to California in the USA. This is fire safety officer Henry. He's a one-year-old goat working in a team who prevents fires by eating the vegetation, which can cause wildfires. And it's a job he's pretty good at. He has a fun job. All he does is eat. California is so hot that plants, or brush, frequently dry up, making it easy for fires to start if lightning strikes or campfires get out of control. So who do you call to prevent those fires? Hello, 
Henry. That's right, you call Henry. This is Henry's family. They run a ranch for Henry and 350 of his fire safety colleagues, who today have been called out for a very important job. Client George has been threatened by fires in the past and needs to make sure that his ranch is safe. So it's another day in the office for Henry and the fire prevention GOAT team. But this job's different. This one comes with a big new challenge. He's actually gonna spend the night and he will stay on the job site um, clearing brush. Yes, this is Henry's first job where he'll spend the night away from home. That may be scary, but Henry's gonna have to put any nerves aside as this is a big job. This. Fortunately, Henry is a true professional. He can consume the equivalent of one bag of shopping every day, and he's only going to get hungrier. When Henry grows up, he's gonna eat 10 bags of groceries. Although eating for a living might seem like dream work, it's not without its dangers. And when I say dangers, I mean dangers. Henry has to work under the threat of attack from predators, including coyotes, bobcats, and mountain lions. But Henry's a smart goat. He always has protection when he's on the job. So Henry will be going today to his job site with some bodyguards. A great Pyrenees guards him, while a collie wrangler makes sure Henry stays with the group. But will those guys be able to help Henry when it gets dark? We'll soon find out. It's time to go to work. Yummy, yummy, everyone's clearly hungry, which is a good start. There's a lot of work to be done. As the rest of the team goes crazy, Henry takes a more refined approach. He prefers a meal with a view. Ah, Henry, you old romantic you. It's soon time for Constantine to go home and for Henry and the other goats to continue working without human supervision. Good luck, Henry. It's not long after 3 a.m. I've never been up this late before. There's been some scary noises. Oh, what's that? Woo! Phew. It's okay. It was just Henry eating. That a boy. My nerves can't take this. Let's hope Henry can hold up. Finally, it's dawn. So, was Henry able to handle his first night away from home? Yes, he was. There he is, looking as professional as ever. The night shift was no problem for this goat, and the whole farm has been cleared. Not one bit of unwanted vegetation in sight. The fire risk is gone. But what does the family think? How do you think Henry did? Good. You can say that again. So well done, Henry. You're one brave fire safety goat. Now go and get some breakfast. You must be starving. Hi. I'm just looking for that rapscallion who's been playing all those tricks and pranks on me. I know exactly who he is. I know what he looks like. I just gotta find him. We know him as the Cheeky Monkey. I'll tell you, I am sick of him playing pranks on me. I know what he looks like. I know where I'm gonna find him. I just have to find him through this bush. I need something to help me do that. Brilliant. Now I'll find him. <laughs> Come on, you little cheeky monkey, show yourself. Because I'm going to get you. No one plays a prank on John Barrowman and gets away with it. <laughs> ah. oh. No sign of him yet. I better get back to set. That's all for today. Thanks for watching Animals at Work. See you next time. Uh, John, have you looked in the mirror recently? Why? Give me a mirror now! It's that cheeky monkey! Next is off to Devon in England. Tyrone is a crested black macaque with a difference. He's the resident food critic at his zoo. Yep, you heard me right. Tyrone is a food critic. And it's a job he's perfect for, given his picky eating habits. 
Paran can be very fussy with his food, often picks and tastes the food, and then if he's happy with it, everyone else will join him. That's right, when it comes to food, all the other animals in the zoo follow Tyrone's lead. Everyone knows he has great taste, and if he doesn't like something, word travels fast. From the giraffes, to the owls, to the tigers, to the zebras. In fact, all over the zoo. Tyrone's a natural food critic. His huge teeth and varied eating habits mean he'll try almost anything. But liking it is a different story. While macaques live in the rainforest of Indonesia and eat all sorts of plants, fruit, and insects, they even use their cheek pouches to save food until it's time to eat. Today, Tyrone will be sampling a potential new addition to the zoo's menu. Pak Choy is a delicious and nutritious Chinese cabbage that's high in fiber, protein, vitamins, and minerals. Everyone at the zoo is especially proud of the Pak Choy. It's been growing using a vertical growing system. This special system involves stacking plants on vertical platforms. It allows a huge number and variety of plants to be grown in a very small space, which means lots and lots of yummy food for all the different animals. But like anything grown at the zoo, before the pak choy makes it anywhere near the menu, it needs Tyrone's seal of approval. If Tyrone likes it, then it gets his go-ahead and can be rolled out to all the other animals. If not, then it's bye-bye pak choy, which would be very bad news for the zookeepers who spend all that time growing it. Keeper Andrew's feeling the pressure. It's his job to feed the macaques. We are a bit worried about giving Tyrone the pak choy, because um, obviously if he doesn't like it, then uh, we won't be feeding it to the rest of the zoo. So it's clearly a big day for the zoo. All right, Tyrone, get ready for your first taste of pak choy. Andrew throws the pak choy into the monkey enclosure. Mmm. Tyrone samples a leaf. But what's this? Oh, he's tossed it aside and stormed indoors without properly trying the food. No word either way from Tyrone. This is a disastrous blow to the Pak Choy project, and the rain's not improving the odds of success. I don't think Tyrone's going for the Pak Choy outdoors because of the weather. Andrew has one last chance to get Tyrone to OK the Pak Choy. He puts some of the greens inside Tyrone's indoor enclosure. This isn't how he normally feeds him, but the weather leaves no choice. Tyrone comes over. He has a good look around. Oh no, I can't look. And neither can this guy. What's this? Well, I'm gonna be a monkey's uncle. Tyrone is eating the pad toy. Amazing scenes. Yummy, yummy, crunch, crunch. And immediately, Tyrone's influence is on display. Seeing that he's approved it, the other monkeys tuck in. Even the little baby fella. Tyrone's endorsement of the pak choy means the other animals get to give it a go. The giraffes gobble it. The baboons love it. And the elephant, she can't get enough of it. Great work, Tyrone. So the animals have another tasty addition to their menu. And it's all thanks to Tyrone, the food critic who does not monkey around. Now those kids who love animals, it's the... Fanimals, yes! Let's meet the Fanimals, our animal detectives. Lucas, Brianna, and Sarah. And say hello to the birds with the most excellent job on the Fanimals farm. It's the chickens. A chicken's job is to lay eggs, and they're pretty good at it. But the farmers suspect that they could be even better, so he's drafted in the Fanimals to try and help them with their egg laying. Each Fanimal will team up with a hen. Then each team will try a different technique to encourage speedy egg laying. The team who lay an egg the quickest wins. The chicken contenders are Rachel, Rock, and Ruth. They're all female chickens, also known as hens. The average hen lays 259 eggs a year. But these girls are exceptionally good at their job and often lay an egg a day. Yeah. Judging the teams will be our expert, Farmer Ed. Down to business. 
First, the Fanimals need to select their chicken. Take your time, Fanimals. Your decision is crucial. The key to winning this challenge might be picking the right hen. So, Fanimals, which chicken plucks your fancy? When do you want to I decide to go with Rachel. I chose Rock. Okay. Finally, a decision. The lineup is... Team one, Brianna and Rachel. <laughs> Team two, Lucas and Rock. <laughs> Team three, Sarah and Ruth. Next, the teams pick the strategies they're going to use to help their chicken. Rock. So, Fanimals, what have you got? I'm gonna love my chicken. Ah, the romantic. I'm gonna help my chicken lay eggs with science. That would be the scientist. I'm just natural. And the good old fashioned natural method. Each team has 30 minutes to try their technique. Whichever team lays an egg first wins. First up, it's team one, Brianna and Rachel, with the romantic approach. I love you. I can't wait to meet your egg. I'll always be here for you if you need to talk to me. Next, it's team number two, Lucas and Rock, and the scientific approach. Feel the light. Lucas is testing out a scientific fact that the more light hens receive, the more eggs they lay. But will this bright idea work? Last, it's team number three, Sarah and Ruth, and their natural approach. Ruth, I support you in your natural space. Ruth, I believe in you. Ruth, do what you want to. You can lay an egg or you don't have to. It's up to you. So, our animal detectives have conducted their experiments and time is up. Let's see what we got. It's the here. moment of reckoning. Out of the way. Have any of the teams produced an egg? First, Brianna and Rachel. Could they romance an egg? Uh, no. Unlucky team one. Next, Lucas and Rock. Did their scientific egg experiment <laughs> work? That would be a no. Maybe next time, team two. So it's all on Sarah and Ruth and the natural approach. Fingers crossed. <gasps> and would you believe it? Nothing there either. Sorry, guys. No eggs. So bad luck all around, Fanimals. None of your experimental techniques worked. However, Lucas was on the right track. Scientific experiments in the past have proven that the more light there is, the more eggs chickens lay. Sadly, he didn't pull it off today. But all the Fanimals proved one thing for certain. You can't rush an egg-laying hen. <laughs> and finally, it's back to Nottinghamshire in the UK. Sam is a hearing dog for 10-year-old Lauren, who along with 35,000 other kids in the UK is deaf. Sam's job is even more special as he's one of only a handful of hearing dogs working with children. And he's a real star. He helps keep Lauren safe, helps her and her family communicate, Take it to Lauren. and as a bonus, he's also become her best mate. Miss Sam, but that's not enough for Sam and Lauren. They want to go one step better. Lauren's desperate to show everyone just how strong their bond is and test their communication skills to the limit by putting Sam through his paces on a dog agility course. Sam's never let Lauren down before, so his pride's really on the line. To complete the course, he'll have to successfully respond to all Lauren's commands and avoid making any mistakes. There's no two ways about it. This is going to be tough. It's the morning of the big day, and Sam's eager to go. The whole family's come to the agility course to cheer on Lauren and Sam, and are joined by Jan and Jenny, who were responsible for Sam's training. If the pressure wasn't on before, it really is now. Chris is the trainer who'll be putting Sam through his paces, and when I say paces, I mean paces. It features tricky obstacles including tunnels, jumps, the dreaded A-frame. First things first though, it's that tunnel which is going to be a lot trickier than it looks. 
For some dogs, it can be quite dark, smelly. This is Sam's chance to prove that he can quickly respond to Lauren's call. Good luck, Sam. That's it. Sam! He's in the tunnel, but can he make it through? Good boy! And he's done it! Great skills, yeah, well Sam! <laughs> but there's no time for celebration as it's straight on to the second challenge, the jumps. Sam's got to negotiate his way over a series of hurdles. Should be simple enough. Here we go. Oh no, Sam! What are you doing? You're meant to go over them, not around them. And knocking them over certainly isn't a part of the plan. Do you want to do it again? Yeah, okay. let's try so again. Bring them Here we go. Hey, that's better! One, two, and three! Woo! That's it! Well done, well done. Good. Did it really, really well. As if everyone's nerves weren't in shreds, it's the last test. The toughest of the toughest. The dreaded A frame! Sam's gonna need all his concentration to deal with this bad boy. But no one saw this coming. Sam's being distracted by a cheeky little minx called Layla. Ew! This is no time for romance, Sam! Let's focus, okay? Here we go. Lauren, do you wanna bring, we just bring Sam on over to here? You can do this. So if you pass me the lead, you got treats in your hand. Okay, let's go. Yes, yes, yes. Go, yes! Go, go. That's it. yes! No! <laughs> Disaster struck! Sam slipped off the frame. How embarrassing! Especially in front of his fans, and even worse, Layla! This won't do. So to make amends, Sam and Lauren quickly hatch a plan. They're going to attempt the course in the shape of their very own sequence. Here goes. It's a jump, then the A-frame. Yes, he's made it. It's another Ella. jump, and Ella. another jump, and one final jump, and that's it, he's done. He's completed the agility course with flying colors. Um, a kiss for Sam and some well-deserved praise. Oh, it's been uh, absolutely wonderful to watch uh, Sam and Lauren today. I uh, look very happy. Good boy. Good on you, Sam. You deserve it. Wow, Sam really is a special dog. Well, that's it for now. It's goodbye from me, and it's goodbye from him. See you next time on Animals at Work. Did you like that? Oh, I'm sorry to bore you.